Roses, a podcast for a couple of Midwest women cultivate a community at the D&D table. I'm Soren. And I'm Katie. Uh, this week in the Rose Garden, we are talking about like collaborating versus reacting versus reacting versus collaborating um, <laughs> and just what it looks like at tables and um, how they're different and if they're different. Maybe they're not different. They're different. Um, so we've got our regularly scheduled structure, um, but <laughs> before the roll with it today, we're going to talk about reacting and then after the roll with it, we'll get into collaborating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't have, I don't want to preamble this too terribly much. Um, but in our talking about it in preparation, <laughs> I don't believe Mm -hmm. that either of these things are inherently good or bad um we talk a lot about collaborating and Mm -hmm. how this is a collaborative like storytelling game Mm -hmm. um and we're talking about how there's a difference between collaborating and reacting so it would be natural i think to think that uh reacting thereby is the wrong choice And I'm here to tell you, in our conversation today, I think we're going to find that it's not the wrong choice. It's just a different style. Yeah, and she's saying that for everybody to get the context, but also for me. Because when I started thinking about this topic, I was like, oh, it's a one's bad and one's good. Um, And I just (laughs) hadn't mentally fleshed out that we're just talking about the two. Yep, yep. It's not like a, a battle to the death no. of which one's better for D&D. Comparing, but we're gonna, contrasting. Yes. Yeah. And how they can both fit into right. any campaign, any table. Right, right, right. Yeah. So to start off with, reacting is, dare I say, what our table does. Um, <laughs> and in I asked this to Soren before we started, and I agree with your answer, but I asked her if I thought, if she thought that critical role was collaborative or reacting and i'm gonna give you a setup that my father gave me when we were talking about this topic in our weekly chat kind of in passing but i was talking about how uh i had a smaller session uh when we were playing as prim like in that time frame And I was Prim and Connor, one of Sam's other friends, was playing a character within this world, um, but it was just he and I and Sam. And Connor's character and Prim had like a previous uh, relationship, not romantic of any kind, but just like we were co-workers, if you will. Yeah. Um, And I was telling my dad that I was really shocked because... When Connor came into the chat and we officially started, Connor just immediately was like, I think there's a bakery. And I think in this bakery, they sell these things. And I think it's a place we used to go a lot, you know, like that sort of thing. And I was telling my dad that that was so out of like the norm for how I have played D and D felt it instantly. I usually like, if we were to do this per what I was used to, Sam would have prompted, all right, so you guys, when you were working together, were in the city center a lot, and you um, probably went out and had a lot of, like, meals together, things like that. And now he might have said, like, where do you think you went? But he would have prompted that suggestion. Yeah, he would have laid laid the foundation a little bit for you. Right, whereas in contrast connor just was like and i'm in control now yeah (laughs) Yeah. um and dad was saying like it sounds like connor's more used to a more collaborative table Mm -hmm. and you're used to a table that reacts to what sam presents you and i was like oh yeah (laughs) Uh uh-huh and there's like a part of me that's like isn't that wasn't that isn't that what D &D is (laughs) uh (laughs) And my dad, in also some context, plays a GM-less Oh, yeah, you game. mentioned that. Yeah. And so, like, this, every time he talks about it, I'm like, that's buck wild. Like, 
<laughs> the, like neither of them the, you can't surprise each other because you're both sitting there like okay so i think this thing happens next mm. you know what i mean mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um or they like work together to be like i'm bored with this arc let's do this next let's do this instead you know mm -hmm. like that sort of a thing um but that's way more collaborative than somebody presenting a story to you yeah so uh, in our preparation i said to you i think this might speak a little more to the dm style yes than maybe the player style yeah and i think the the dm as as well as the players but i think the dm can kind of becomes this example of like what a player could do sometimes. sure right yeah but yeah sorry continue well and so like when you were saying i think critical role does a little bit of both like yeah. there are some players who are more of that collaborative they'll kind of take the reins and make their own scene yeah versus the players that will kind of react to what matt says but i also in my like thinking about how matt dms mm -hmm. I don't know how, I mean, other than like, what do you guys want to do or uh, tell me what this looks like, you know, like that sort of thing. I don't know that he's prompting the players to take the reins very often. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So in this context, I'm going to stop talking after this. I really promise. Um, but after this, con like this in instance with dad, I was like, I don't want to break what the dm what the dm has already created so i'm less likely to just be like my turn you yeah. know what i mean and he yeah. was like okay think let me let me try something with you and i think you'll find that it it doesn't feel like that and he basically narrated like okay you're in a ship warehouse mm -hmm. and you're trying to get to the captain's office okay. and you uh what what do you do and i was like uh i don't know i roll an investigation check uh, to see if there's anything that points me towards it mm -hmm. and he was like okay and i had dice there so i rolled and i think i got like a 16 i don't know and he was like okay what do you find like you like, rolled a 16 what, um, do you, what do you find and i was like i don't know i don't know i found a person <laughs> <laughs> i think a person who could tell me how to get there <laughs> i think i said i found a spell scroll that casts a spell that like gives me a magical guide to what I'm looking for. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. And he just like narrated what that sounds like. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, and he was just like, so See? I mean, it's not, you're not, I'm not making you be the DM for a minute. Yeah. It's like prompting you to come up with the thing that creative. exists. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's, yeah, that's interesting. I, and this is not a criticism to Sam or yeah. any DM that doesn't do this, but yeah. like that, Sam doesn't usually prompt like that. That's yeah. not how his DM style is. So mm -hmm. he's not sitting there going, cool, you rolled a 10 on persuasion. What do you think the person says to you? Yeah. Like, it's like, yeah, you rolled the 10 in persuasion. Here's, and they said. Here's what they say. Yeah. Um, all of that to say, I think our table is very reactionary yeah. compared to collaborative within that definition. Yeah, I would agree. And I think that helps me... Um, to frame it in a neither is like bad yeah, or one right. neither is worse than the other. Um, I, I really like, I like that framework that your dad like walked you through. Mm -hmm. um, I think that also helps. And like, um, I think it's something that there is plenty of room for players to ask their DM, like, hey, every once in a while, if you want to, like, throw it to me so I can, like, I'm trying to practice or, like, I'm trying to get better at, like, yes anding. Like, mm -hmm. could you give me a couple of, like, moments where I could do that? I think that's a great opportunity if you are at a more reactionary table to be like, can I get, like, a couple collab moments? Sure. And I also think, like, to your point with Critical Role, mm -hmm. like, I think... The ways though I don't ever see those characters like I'm taking the reins yeah. now, but they <laughs> yeah. say like I'd really like to visit this, or I'd yeah. really like to ha to have a scene with this character or mm -hmm. something like that. And then Matt just like collaborates with them through that role playing scene. Mm -hmm. um, but like I wrote for reaction for reacting that to an extent that is yes anding the D dm's prompts so sam yeah, says yeah. you see your brother what do you do got it and, and that's yes yeah. anding um 
I'm trying not to get into collaboration yet because I want to save that for the second half. But sure. like, um, I think there's perhaps a spectrum of yeah, what that yes anding sounds like, mm-hmm. whether that's a what do you find, mm-hmm. which is a kind of yes and mm-hmm. versus uh, if that same scene happened at our table. I roll a 16 on investigation and Sam says, cool, you find a map. Now it's your choice what you do with that map, you know, mm -hmm. or, or you find a key, you don't know what it goes to. Yeah. Um, Or even like a, you find a key and at the top of the key, there's a crown on the like top of the key, which indicates to you that this probably belongs to an official of some sort. Yeah. Or like the key has the numbers um, engraved on it that are this like are replicated on like the who is it we're trying to get to captain's quarters yeah yeah, yeah. Um, like the captain's like office or like right. door so like you know this is the captain's office key right and I told dad even after that little exercise I was like when you first say what do you find I my the the there are too many options. And I, and I think this would come with practice. I think that yeah. if we were at a table that did this more often, it would feel a little bit more natural. But because our table doesn't function like this, mm-hmm. I'm sitting here going, uh, uh, what's, nar- what's a narratively cool thing that I could find that doesn't just break the game? You know, like doesn't break <laughs> sure. the like, interest. Sure, yeah. But is helpful to me. Mm-hmm. It's like saying, what do you find? Well, I find a plus 10 sword. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, yeah. Cause I mean, yeah. Cause in that situation, like you're, you're kind of taking a risk, like not in like a oh high stakes, mm-hmm. but like taking a risk on like, I kind of expect you to like stay in line to an extent of like, there are what unspoken we're doing. boundaries. Yeah. And like, you're not going to ruin the game. You're not going to break anything. Just as long as you're not trying to like, narrate the most broken weapon or special magic right, item in right. the game like don't don't be ridiculous and i think i think if i were to talk to sam about it he would say that like if he prompted like that there would be very little besides saying something like i find a plus 10 sword there's very little that i could suggest that would ruin some grand idea that he has you know what i mean like there's very little i could say that would make it bad yeah like i there are very few wrong answers is what i'm trying to communicate Mm -hmm. very few wrong answers um but for whatever the reason like even that small what do you find question made me go so it feel like a spotlight just like Yo, a hundred percent. And I could, and yeah. that was only with me and dad. Like yeah, imagine like, if ah. you were sitting at a table with everybody. Yeah. And I, I think like what this is like this, even just talking about, um, reacting is making me realize that I do want like a couple more chances to like, like have that like collaborative moment. Mm-hmm. But I totally, like, I, I know what that feels like when you're like, I was not prepared to be the one to be the mm-hmm. narrating. You, you do go back to it. Uh-huh. Take it away from me. Well, and I think Sam <laughs> said to me before that like, sometimes like that table, Connor's table will bounce off of each other so, so much. much that whoever is the DM eventually will have to be like, Oh, get back to it. I, now I'm in control again. You yeah. all sit down. Yeah. Um, and that's just, I find it interesting. That was a thing that I didn't know was different. Yeah. That like, if you don't play at multiple tables with multiple, you might pe- not like different people, notice that that I just thought this is how you played that, that variation is there. Right. And that's yeah. why I also think that I think I, I am currently wondering if dad's suggestion between reacting and collaborating Mm -hmm. comes from people who have DM'd. Connor is a DM. Connor has DM'd. So it makes sense to me that Connor would feel comfortable saying, this is what I think this looks like. Similarly, dad has DM'd and now plays in a GM-less game. So he is used to and frequently has the reins. 
you know? Yeah. Whereas like you and I never DM'd. So like that's not something that I'm used to having to She's be responsible for. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. Uh <laughs> I I like that's just not something we've ever had to like yeah. work through. So yeah. I wonder if you are more and comfortable in the collaboration seat to like a world building perspective if you've DM'd before. I feel like that I think that would make sense. Anyone who's a DM, like please, please, please mm -hmm. send us some feedback, send us some comments, because I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah. Do you feel like you end up being a more collaborative player because you've been a DM? And I feel like because my thought like furthering that is like you've had to overly prepare yeah. like a DM does. You have had to hold so much information in your head. You are aware of a lot of different ways that things can go. Right. And you also had to like structure down and like limit yourself mm -hmm. for the sake of telling a story or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. And so And the improv skills are like yep. there. So to be a player in that scenario, I I actually am interested to know if it feels a little freeing. If it mm. feels a little bit like I don't know. I'd, I'd love to hear any DMs comments on that. Mm. Uh, <laughs> do you want to roll with it and then talk yes. like more about collaboration? Yes. Okay. Uh rolling with it today is the current table oh the, the one about currents what's going on right now hopefully tj will throw a little dice up here for us we got a 19 my dudes a 19 that's delightful we already did that one nah. <laughs> one more time hopefully 16 we haven't done that one what is it? What is your current phone wallpaper and or lock screen? I'll take a screenshot of it because my phone is recording the episode. <laughs> well, I go here. Ahead. <laughs> Hopefully it's focused. My wallpaper is boring. It's just purple. Um, I don't mess with that too often. I'm not somebody that changed. Oh, oh, I was so far away from my microphone at that point. You were indeed. Sorry. Sorry, TJ. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, what I said was everybody say on because it's a picture of me and Sam I'm at our sure wedding. I'm sure we'll be able to hear you. <laughs> okay, great. And then I said my, my home screen was boring. I'm not somebody that likes to change my lock screen and wallpaper very sure. often. Sure, I have a different lock screen set up for each focus mode that I have. Anyway, um, when I'm getting ready to go to bed um, and I put my phone on like, do not disturb. Um, I know for a fact that my lock screen is um, Usagi uh, Tsukino from Sailor Moon and she's yawning and going to sleep. I'll put it, I'll ask TJ to put it on the screen right here. Um, and then I think my wallpaper might be the night sky on that focus mode. And then when I'm at work, and I have it on work mode. It's my lock screen is a picture I took in Chicago on the river. Um, I'm on a bridge and I just took a picture of like the skyscrapers, the river, all that good stuff. That's the lock screen. And then the background is some kind of plaid when you go in. And then my like standard, huh? What is my standard lock screen? I'll take screenshots of all of these uh -huh. and you'll be able to enjoy them right up here. My reaction is one of, I can't imagine the mental what energy. It doesn't take mental energy. It's for fun. you. It's fun. I like, <laughs> so I'll tell you, I picked this picture of me and Sam. Yeah. Because with the new Apple update. Yeah. You it can looks put the clock cool behind, behind it. Sam's head. Absolutely. Um, but then if I were to go into my pictures right now, I don't know that I could go through my pictures and find pictures I liked enough to oh, make to them make a, wallpaper. a wallpaper. Sure. And I'm very particular about my home screen. I feel that. Because if it's like a picture with stuff on it, mm -hmm. then it just looks stupid behind all the apps. I agree. So, like, it has to just be, like, a solid pattern or I something agree. like I think that. people 
who can comfortably put a complicated picture as their home screen. Yeah. Insane. I never want to look at it. I'm so sorry. That scares me. I also like, (laughs) I'm looking at my camera roll right now. It's. (laughs) I spooked her guys. It's. (laughs) Like 85% cat pictures <laughs> of my own animals. Um, There are some pictures of our driveway because every time I scooped our driveway, I sent it to Sam so he could see that I did it. Um, <laughs> There are some, for whatever the reason, anytime I like posted something to either our story or like my own story, it like saves as a thing on, our, it's on a my thing camera. It's a you can roll. turn off on Instagram. I don't have the patience to figure that out so i just steal her phone one day and turn off all the things that aren't helpful i have a picture of sam with a yarmulke on the one time that we went to grandma grandpa's house for hanukkah oh sure (laughs) i've got some pine wood pictures i just like nothing that's worth looking at on a daily basis both tj and i have this on pinterest i have a wallpaper board that I literally save pictures that are in like a wallpaper orientation. And yeah. if I think they're even slightly cool, like I might use it someday or I might, I just like the picture, the illustration, whatever. I will just save it there so that I can come back and look at it later. Um, very seldom do I have like pictures that I have taken. The Chicago one is a, is an exception because it was a nice picture. I guess the like the <laughs> only way that this is different is like my iPad home screen was like a Pinterest wallpaper. Yeah. Like this is like a Pinterest gradient and same with the lock screen was a Pinterest that's, gradient. That's all I do. But that is for whatever the reason this feels different to me. <laughs> uh because this is like a laptop and this is a thing I use to say words to other people. I don't know, man. <laughs> Can you all comment below if you have like intricate? Do you curate your do wallpapers? You, do you curate your wallpapers, or is that too much work? And you say no, thank you. I have a dynamic wallpaper for my PC that changes with the day. Oh sure, yeah. And then I was trying to do one for my new laptop, mm-hmm. and I looked at it for ten minutes and was like, I couldn't care less about this. So I I just say let it like be my default like iOS whatever because mm. mm-hmm. like I just don't care and I like I like mm-hmm. like looking at things that are cute and pretty yeah. but I just like can't bring myself to spend time <laughs> on it and I think what you have seen everybody um. <laughs> <laughs> is that um we are two different people That's i all. have saved <laughs> like th- on pinterest i have saved uh pictures of like the stupid they're not stupid the like you're like mood boards and stuff uh no like the different ways that you can uh uh god uh the different ways you can skin apps Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's app covers. Okay. I've saved those. They look cool. I like the way they look. That is something I don't want to put my energy into. And I simply could never. <laughs> what I... I don't you have, have app covers on your desktop. Your, fo- your file folders look different Oh, that's than 20 times different than doing it on a phone. Well, either way, I could never. <laughs> <laughs> I was a part of like a... a patreon support um i was supporting oh my god (laughs) i was supporting an artist on patreon and one of her rewards at one point was um desktop app covers Mm. um and on laptops and specifically on mac all Mm -hmm. you have to do is right click the folder go Mm -hmm. to the phrase get info Mm -hmm. and then you can copy Mm -hmm. and paste Mm -hmm. right onto the icon that's it so that's the only reason I have app covers on my laptop. On my phone, it drives me nuts because it has to function through the shortcut yeah, app. Yeah, oh, I so saw somebody making... So you tap it, goes the shortcut, then goes to the app. That's dumb. Period. I, yeah. Sorry, that's my hot take. I don't like app covers on your phone. Just for me personally. I think when people have really cute curated ones, like, have at it. I love that. 
maybe I didn't actually Not pin them. Me. I just looked at them and then they were showing up on my home screen for a while. <laughs> but I like I would look at them and go, wow, that looks really That's nice. So I pretty. like the way that that looks. And then I like the time it took for me to organize these widgets on my <laughs> app, on my home screen, just to like make it look nice. I no. was like, this is far too complex. I was doing those mood boards for each month for a while. Mm -hmm. I will never again. It just like took me to like, I would have to carve out Sunday time to make a mood board for the next month that served actually zero purpose. It inspires me. It's pretty. But I look at it once. I look at it all the time. I slip back to it and I go. I try. <laughs> I tr I tried. I made a, I made yeah, a mood board for almost every month. And when I made I it, I looked at it and I was like, yeah, that looks nice. And I understand what all of these mean to me. <laughs> yeah. And then I put it on my planner, on my digital planner. And then I never again ever looked at it unless I was showing someone. Yeah. Like, look, I made a picture. Look, I colored this basically was what I was saying. And then I never, ever, ever went back to it. Ever. <laughs> Sometimes I would look at it and go, mm, fall. And then I would not She's look at it. She's just describing yet. like all of the drawings I make. I'm just like, I made this look. Close the book forever. There's a difference between being an illustrator and an artist <laughs> and then going on Canva and putting pictures together and going, <laughs> uh -uh. same thing. No, it's not. Same Don't. Thing. No, it's not. It's not. Same thing. It's not the same thing. <laughs> okay. We took way too long That's to enough. talk about this. I have opinions. Anyway. Apparently. <laughs> collaboration <laughs> so to what me we're not doing <laughs> this is what i think i think this is players assisting in world building sure oh yeah this is like collab Lit i didn't write it down but literally the game a quiet year which i want to play with you so bad sure. it is the epitome of collaborating right and i think it's also just players who are more assertive in the creative nature yeah like connor did not ask sam hey Could is it cool I if i step this? in he was just like this is what it looks like this is what i see and he i'm assuming his thought is if sam doesn't like this he'll stop me yeah you know what i mean yeah like if there's if there's any area that needs to be curbed uh -huh. the dm is all over it right. and like you never want to or at least my thought is i'm guessing connor would never like try to be a burden on the story or yeah, whatever right. but he's like oh, he'll rein me in if, if we need it right so i mean if this is something if this is something that you want to do more of <laughs> since you said specifically that you would like more prompting um perhaps it's not even needing more prompting you just gotta like throw your throw your fire in there throw your torch in the fire <laughs> Okay. And and say like, hey Sam, I wanna do this. Yeah. And as soon as you said that, that just scared the crap out of me. Why? <laughs> let's let's unpack that. <laughs> Why was that scary? Mainly because I have I think right this second thinking about that, I have no idea where I would start. But when you said you wish you had more prompts like that, what prompts were you wanting? Oh, let's think. Like, give if you could give an example. I will. I'll try. Um. Okay. Mm -hmm, um. Mm -hmm. Bura has a chance to see Valen again. Like, let's say TJ's not there, or let's say like um. Sam doesn't describe where it is but like asks like hey can you like tell us what we're looking at like as you like meet Valen. So like a uh, uh, atmospheric surrounding maybe environment prompt. yeah i think that i think i like i like the prompting of like what item did you find because mm -hmm. i like pulling that kind of stuff out of my head mm -hmm. um i think I don't know that I so much would be keen to the, like, what do you think this person says to you? Yeah, right. I think that would be a little tough for me. Um, so. But definitely, like, atmosphere, mm -hmm. maybe, like, objects and things we're actually interacting with. Uh -huh. Maybe. I think definitely, like, how my, like, relatives or family or people I'm very close to, like, fig like being able to describe how they might react to something. Or, like, describe things about them, things they might do, or something they might say to me if I'm having a conversation with them. What if 
Nah. Let's say. <laughs> do a little thought experiment. Let's say that we're in that moment and I'm going to take Valen out of it for the second That's just fine. to make it something you didn't already say. Sure. Okay. You are going to meet with Melora. You get a chance. You get a chance, an audience with Melora. Okay. And let's say Sam narrates that. And before he can get to the next thing, what if you just inserted, I think I know where this would take place. I think that, and I think this would take place like on the lake or on the little island Mm -hmm. where we saw like the like, the like, yeah. So for (laughs) reference, um, because that's weird. Um, We had a couple of players, players go to. You were one Uh, of them. Huh? You were one of them. <laughs> yes. Um, but we we went to um, this lake. We witnessed this like beautiful kind of like moonlight ceremony, like on a lake. Kind of like a hatching um, of a goddess. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, Prim and Valen's like visages were there, but like they were not, but they were. Like we could see their outlines. And then, yes, Melora was like reborn. <laughs> um, so I think that it would take place there. Mm-hmm. I think that I would probably have to like weed my way like through the forest again. Mm-hmm. And I would probably have to be one of those turtles again. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's really, that's calling upon something that I already know True. and that I already am familiar with. True. But I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Correct. Um, but I think it would happen there because I feel like Melora would know or would, would feel that that place is important. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also like as a as a character Mm -hmm. not the player Mm -hmm. um i think lura would be more inclined or like be more interested not that melora is not interesting Mm -hmm. but she'd be like that's the last place i saw valen like Mm -hmm. um like maybe there'd be a little bit of like hope kind of like spiraling Mm -hmm. in there Mm -hmm. um yeah so i would i would probably say like by that lake so if you're somebody like soren (laughs) <laughs> who is interested in more opportunities <laughs> seize the day <laughs> you don't have to wait for your dm to give you those prompts open the gate you could so you could say your dm could be saying you're about to do this sort of a scene and before they can narrate the scene you don't have to like jump in and be like a jerk about it. What is happening? I'm singing Seize the Day. Okay. I was trying to do it quietly though. <laughs> you don't have to be a jerk about it and be like, this is my turn. But you could say, like, hey, I am excited about the scene and I have an idea of how this where this is gonna shake out mm-hmm. or how this is gonna shake out. Yeah. Would you mind if I jump in and give some suggestions? Yeah. And yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. and your DM, if they already have a plan that is, you know imperative to the narrative oh, is that what i mean imperative yeah to the narrative yeah <laughs> uh imperative <laughs> to the narrative then they can say like actually i have a thought for this already that like ties in later so mm-hmm. if you wouldn't mind letting me just take this one that's like you gotta be okay with that answer you gotta work gotta do that shadow work so <laughs> you can deal with that rejection <laughs> but they might also be like oh yeah sure do my job for a little while, please. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I feel like DMs might jump in for that. I think the contrast and the balance to that is like, I feel like I have not played any TTRPGs with these kinds of people, but I have either played games or played sports, what have you, with the person that's like, I'm in charge. I'm taking over. I'm the person in charge. And they're not the person in charge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like overdoing it. So I think just balancing that like nobody's here to actually be the dm unless you are the dm right and like there are opportunities to do what katie just described yeah i think it's just about how you approach it yeah i agree and like i might get to a place where i want to do something like that sounds horrible to me at this moment (laughs) so like i i enjoy showing up with no thoughts in my head and MC. like coming to thoughts as we play that yeah, feels more yeah. natural to my character like that allows me to be more in my character I think mm-hmm. um but that doesn't have to be the same for you so if you're somebody yeah. who's like gosh I really wish like 
I had more opportunity to like put my footprints in this story, Mm -hmm. uh, then you should ask for that. Yeah. And I think there's a good, um, a good opportunity to, if I'm, I'm kind of calling back to an old episode, but I think there's opportunity to, um, get invested or like get some buy-in, um, like we've talked about in some of our earlier episodes with like, you know, go ahead, be invested in the story. Well, I think if if you're reaching out for some of these collab moments, those moments might end up feeling like just a little extra special because mm-hmm. like you got to kind of throw it in. Right. So then you have a little more buying, a little more investment. That story might like mean a little bit more to you and you'll feel like you had a, a different variety of right. part in it. And I think there is something to be said about you taking the reins and doing it rather than, for instance, like texting Sam on the side and saying, like, I want more opportunities to collab. I want you to throw me things more yeah. often. Uh, because I think that puts more responsibility on the DM. Who to be already, like, right, they want to do this. Right. Who sure. already is like handling the story at large yeah. and the mechanics and all of that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So I encourage you, if you are somebody who wants this, instead of texting your DM and saying like, throw me more bones, you take the initiative. And if there's something you hear that you want to put your footprint in, just do that like ask thing that I did earlier of just like, Hey man, I have an idea for this. Can I, tell you what I think mm-hmm. and see what they say. Yeah. Um, and I, like, I would say that that's how I've seen it come out in critical role more often. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Like, I would agree. Of Liam O'Brien or somebody saying like, Hey, I have this idea. Can I, can we explore this a little bit? Yeah. And then the DM being like, yeah. Or, Hey, we only have one hour left and <laughs> I really need to get I gotta through, this bust scene. through this bud. <laughs> right. So like, it, there's a conversation to be had there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's it <laughs> for us this week. That's, that's it. That's it. That's it for us this week. Thanks for spending time with us today. Your precious time. We value it and we know it's precious and you could be listening to anything, but you're listening to us and we love that for you. Um, thanks to Noah Trumbull for the use of our theme song. Uh, he has a band called Pearl Parade. They've released it and now al- they've released it. They've released it. An album. And they just won Battle of the Bands recently. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. you should check them out because they're doing big, big things. They're going to be big. You're going to be big, kid. <laughs> uh, yeah. So fill, follow him and stay up to date on everything they're doing. Yep. And if you are enjoying the show, there are a couple things that we'd really appreciate if you would do. First would be to leave a review because reviews help other listeners find us and also determine if they want to listen to us because... We're not for, I'm just kidding. Your um, opinion matters. <laughs> it does. Um, second, um, if you want to follow us everywhere that we have social platforms. So we've got a Facebook page. We've got an Instagram page. And those are really the only ones that we're super active <laughs> on. Um, what did you just... <laughs> uh, um, those are the ones that we're dominantly active on. And then lastly, I, I flipped the order. Last, follow us wherever you get your podcasts. So like Spotify or Apple Podcasts, Mm -hmm. stop that. I know, I I said I flipped it. Um, But follow us where you get our podcasts, where we, we're a podcast so that you can listen to us. Um, And lastly, I already said follow us on Instagram. That's what I'm saying, bro. I get it. I flipped it. Review, follow us on where you listen to podcasts or watch the videos and then follow follow us us on on social media. media. All right. We also want to hear from you. <laughs> so you've done all those things. You've left us a review. You uh, follow us on where you get your podcasts or videos. And you follow us on social media. Now, now I want you to talk to us. So you can send us a DM. You can comment on our posts. But you can also email us at chromaroses at gmail.com. That's C H R O M A. S-E-S. S-E-S. Wow, I got lost there. At gmail.com. And it's all lowercase. Okay? And we will get back to you. We love emails. And also, we will get through this outro if it kills us. Mm-hmm. It's you. Oh, this has been Chromatic Roses. I'm Soren. <laughs> and I'm Katie. Bye, evil. Love others. Love <laughs> others.